Hello everyone, I'm Brior, and welcome back to Good Game Empire. If you've seen my videos before, hopefully you know that I always try to give Good Game Studios a fair shake. I'm not afraid to criticize the game and any new updates, but I won't do it unless they actually deserve criticism. Well, the updates for July are out, and let me tell you, they're pretty bad. Let's talk about it in today's video. The seasonal event for July offered up this NPC commander set. The Treasures of the Elephant Cult is a 95 melee, 95 ranged set with only 105 wall reduction. If you compare this to some of the other, more powerful NPC sets, you'll realize that when using this commander, you'll have to send more wooden ladders. The other thing about this commander is that the courtyard at a measly 55% is not up to par. So overall, this commander is actually not very good. I imagine that many players who already have a lot of NPC commander equipment will not want to spend the 20 million coins necessary to upgrade this set at the Technicus. If you do decide to upgrade this set yourself, I would recommend replacing the hero with a legendary hero that offers additional wall reduction. If you do that, you might be able to send fewer wooden ladders and use the same preset for this commander as you would with the sorceress, for example. Also, early in the month of July, Good Game Studios released a fix for the world map lag issue that was plaguing the game for about a month and making it nearly unplayable on Google Chrome. Uh, nothing bad to say about this, of course, but I did want to mention that if you made any of the changes I suggested in my How to Fix Lag video, uh, you probably want to undo those changes and make sure that you are playing with the latest version of Adobe Flash. The second major update for July brought some changes to Ruby offers, specifically how they appear and what items they contain. It will now be possible to get more Ruby tools through the Prime Day offers. Also throughout July we have seen lots of Ruby offers for temporary equipment sets. Many players purchased this equipment without looking at the details of the Ruby offers, and they didn't realize that first the equipment was temporary, and second that it wouldn't combine with the regular equipment, uh, the stuff that doesn't expire. Last month I blamed Good Game Studios for not including a very important detail in their Ruby offer for the permanent Castellan looks, namely that those pieces of equipment could not accept gems. However, this month, Good Game Studios isn't at fault because the details were available in the Ruby offers and anyone who's spending 40,000 rubies should look carefully at what exactly they are buying. Also, 40,000 rubies for an entire invader set sounds too good to be true anyways, so that should have raised some red flags. The third update for July brought with it some changes to the Shadow Lord of the Shadow Units, so effectively the commander that any Shadow attack will be using. It makes sense that they would make it a little bit more powerful to reflect some of the more powerful sets that have been introduced to the game recently, but nobody I know buys Shadow Units, so I think this is kind of an unimportant change. I have a similar verdict for the new purchasable decoration uh, that is being sold for the low, low price of 66,000 rubies that you can now drop into your castle whenever you'd like. Uh, this decoration is good, but it's not any better than the event rewards, and it is exorbitantly way too expensive, so nobody's going to be buying this, and it's an unimportant change. What's far more important is the changes the third update brought to the construction yard. It was previously the case that all build items would be able to be constructed in a matter of seconds. You could actually hit the skip with rubies button to skip these few seconds for free, which helped make the whole process more efficient. I was actually going to mention that in my upcoming Quick Tips episode until I heard about this change. Now, the high-level upgrades for build items can take upwards of two to three hours, and this sucks. It's another example of Good Game Studios allowing some players to collect all of the things that they need, in other words, upgrade a lot of build items, and then the players who uh, fall behind have their means of catching up uh, ripped out of the game. The quintessential example of this is when Good Game Studios removed the practice of farming from the game. 
Anyone who had known about farming for a long time already had all of their resources collected and all of their upgrades completed, but those just finding out about the practice now had no way of catching up. This is not on the level of removing farming, but it's a similar update and that sucks. Then in the middle of July, we got a very mysterious and confusing post on the forums about the upcoming fusion system. My guess is that posts like these start out life in German and are then translated into English, which is the reason for them sounding so weird. Uh, but anyways, this fusion system is quite interesting. The new feature will apply both for equipment and decorations. You'll be able to combine your old decorations into your new decorations to make your new decorations more powerful and ultimately to have your most powerful decorations in all of your castles, and that's good, I like that. In terms of equipment, the post talked about a new level of equipment rarity, presumably to be called Relic. Uh, now apparently the bonuses that you will be able to get from the fusion system will only be available for 9 piece sets, which kind of sucks, it makes it so that custom combinations of equipment are even less viable than before. Personally, I feel that with all of these changes to equipment, and considering the fact that even low level players can now easily get equipment sets from the events, I think they should remove the ability to loot equipment and gems entirely from the game. After all, when is the last time that you've used an epic hero, for example? Instead, they should allow us to loot more resources and or even rubies, but that is not part of this upcoming update, at least not yet. Anyways, the fusion system is actually not a part of the game yet, which makes it difficult to say exactly how good of an update it will be, but I think it's fairly safe to say that it will be an impactful update, so I hope Good Game Studios gets this one right. And finally, that brings us to one of the most shocking updates in a long while. Now, anyone who has a high-level account will know that PvP is essentially broken and has been for a long time. The attacker can send at most 3,500 troops, but the most powerful alliances can stack upwards of 100,000 defenders at any location within 15 minutes, and that is a real unbalance. There's no way to win against that number of troops, of course, uh, but Good Game Studios has apparently decided that we need even more powerful Castellans in the game. So, there will be a new Castellan available in the Charm Shop via the Shapeshifter Invasion. The Shapeshifter Baron comes complete with 135% melee combat strength, 135% ranged combat strength, 50% extra wall space, and 120% courtyard combat strength. The full stats are available on the screen right now. But essentially, this means that you will at least be able to hold one flank against any six-wave attack, and probably, in most cases, be able to hold two. And with the 120% courtyard, a value higher than most commanders, uh, the attack will be crushed in the courtyard, even at a 1 to 1 troop ratio. So if the attacker had 3,000 troops and the defender had 3,000 troops, now it's the defender that would have the advantage. And this is really unnecessary. In my opinion, this is a stupid set to be introducing to the game right now. In the discussion thread for this update on the forums, many other players were posting similar sentiments, and it's my hope that Good Game Studios will at least make some changes to this equipment set before it is added to the game, because once it is added, they can't really just go back and take it out. According to the forums post, the set is to be available for charms in the charm shop, and also as part of the royal quests, so hopefully they make it either very expensive or very hard to earn. While I was in the process of making this video, the developers announced that they are also making it possible to earn a second copy of the Ivory Queen set this fall, and that's probably a pretty good change. So what do you think about the various updates for July, and is there anything I missed? Let me know in the comment section down below. The channel is about to pass the 1 million views milestone. It's views, not subscribers, but it still counts, and I'll get there one day. So thank you all for that, and I'll see you next time.